And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Dioplosaurus, which was a request from Crow via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Dioplosaurus was an ankylosaur. Well. <laughs> yes, and it lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Alberta, Canada, found in the Dinosaur Park Formation. It looked like other ankylosaurs. It had armor covering its body, it walked on all fours, and it had a tail club. Ooh, an ankylosaurid. <laughs> yes. Even more reason for you to like it. Mm-hmm. Gotta have a tail club. <laughs> Except for Borealopelta, Pelta, that one's still cool. Mm. So Dioplosaurus was estimated to be between 13 to 15 feet or four to four and a half meters long and weigh 3,300 to 5,500 pounds or 1,500 to 2,500 kilograms. Pretty big. Oh, I was going to say it was relatively small. Maybe it's average sized. <laughs> yeah. It did have a long, narrow tail club, too. And that tail club had 10 vertebrae that formed the handle and several osteoderms that formed the knob. Nice. And the tail club knob was longer than it was wide. It probably wasn't born with its tail club. It would have formed it later in life. And it's possible that the tail club found in Diaplosaurus, the specimen, was still growing. Mm. So maybe it was small at this point, but it would have gotten bigger as an adult. Yeah, true. In 2009, Victoria Arbor did a study. They did CT scans of clubs that were referred to Diaplosaurus and Euoplocephalus on the impact force of ankylosaur tail club strikes and found Diaplosaurus couldn't generate enough force to puncture bone because its knob was too small. Mm, so it couldn't break, break legs yeah. like ankylosaurus could. Or Zool. That may mean that the knobs weren't primarily for defense and maybe they were also used for display. Or bashing into other Diaplosaurus. <laughs> Maybe. For <laughs> competition. Diaplosaurus had slender blade-like neural spines and triangular osteoderms on the sides of the front of the tail. The sacral fenestrae, holes in the pelvis, also formed a butterfly-like arrangement. So some interesting details about the skeleton. Mm -hmm. It was an herbivore, and the type species is Diaplosaurus acutosquamius. It was described by William Parks in 1924, and the genus name Diaplosaurus means double-armored lizard. The species name Acutosquamius means sharp scale. That's kind of a fun one. Sharp scale? And double-armored, yeah. Yeah. It was closely related to Scolosaurus and Anodontosaurus. Some other cool ankylosaurids. You think all of them are cool. Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> they are all cool. <laughs> <laughs> the holotype of Diaplosaurus was found in 1919 by Levi Sternberg near Red Deer River. And that includes a partial skull roof, jaw fragments with teeth, osteoderms, skin impressions, vertebrae, tail club, lower leg bones, and ribs. It was mostly the back half of the dinosaur, and the front half was mostly missing. But they think the holotype was probably an almost fully mature individual. Hmm. So I guess going back, maybe it didn't grow that much bigger. The skull originally of the holotype was comprised of several scattered fragments, but a lot of the fragments were discarded in 1924 because they couldn't be articulated. Oh, well, don't throw it away just because you can't put it together. <laughs> and the rest made up an incomplete front of the skull roof. Oh. At least there's the skull roof, the front of the skull roof. Yeah, it's a little heartbreaking. They threw away pieces of the skull. Well, <laughs> different practices, I guess. They didn't know how important skulls of ankylosaurs would be. That that's basically how we define an ankylosaurus now, or ankylosaurid. Yeah. Parks wrote, the tail club was, quote, distinctly different from any previously described, and as far as I am aware, from any that have been collected, end quote. So you can see they place the importance on the tail club. Yeah. Three teeth were preserved with the fragments, but Parks only illustrated the one that he considered the best in his description. That tooth, though, has since been lost, <sighs> but the other two teeth are still around. Okay. That's not nearly as big of a loss as the skull, though, because ankylosaur teeth don't tend to be all that different. In 1930, Gilmore referred a skull to Diaplosaurus based on similarities in the teeth and having osteoderms on the skull, but he said the skull looked a lot like Euoplocephalus tutus. He also said that Parks' illustration of the Diaplosaurus tooth in 1924 was inaccurate. The tooth looked more notosaurid than ankylosaurid, and proposed corrections including his own illustrations of the teeth. 
two specimens have been referred to Diaplosaurus that have partial tail clubs. In 1956, Maleev named a second species, Diaplosaurus giganteus, based on a large specimen with caudal vertebrae, foot bones, and osteoderms, including a partial tail club knob. Mm. And those fossils were found in Mongolia in the Namek Formation. That's cool. Yeah. Maleev said it had similar vertebrae to Diaplosaurus acutosquamius, but it was different because it was bigger. However, in 1977, Diaplosaurus giganteus was reassigned to Tarkia by Tumanova, and it became Tarkia gigantea. In 2014, Victoria Arbor and others found the holotype to not have diagnostic features. It had features in common with all ankylosaurines and considered it to be a nomum dubium. Maybe if they still had all those pieces of the skull, <laughs> we would have had some features that were unique. Oh, no, this refers to the Tarkia gigantea. Oh, that's right. That never had any skull in the first place. That was like legs and farther back. Yeah. Is it, you can't really name an ankylosaur based on only that, unfortunately. It's difficult. And they also said that the differences in size could be from individual variation or ontogeny. Yeah, for sure. In 1971, Walter Coombs synonymized Diaplosaurus, Scolosaurus, and Anodontosaurus with Euoplocephalus. One of the Diaplosaurus jaws was the same as other Euoplocephalus specimens. When he was synonymizing, he said the variability in ankylosaur skulls from Dinosaur Park Formation and Horseshoe Canyon Formation meant that either each specimen was its own species or there was only one species of ankylosaur, and he decided there was only one species. A true lumper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then in 2009, Victoria Arbor and others re-described Diaplosaurus and found it to be valid. He said the hips, and vertebrae, and especially the tail was different enough. Oh, wow. Without a skull. Yeah. Well, there was that part of the skull, but yeah, anyway. They suggested the synonymy was because of the fragmentary nature of the specimens of Euoplocephalus. They wrote, quote, It might be necessary to look beyond traditional cranial characters in order to accurately appraise the number and nature of various ankylosaurid taxa, end quote. Well, then. Yeah. Going beyond the skulls. So Arbor and others proposed that the variation in skulls meant that there were multiple types of ankylosaurs, so the skulls are still important. Euoplocephalus was also found in a younger formation, in the Horseshoe Canyon Formation, a couple million years younger than the formation where Diaplosaurus was found, in the Dinosaur Park Formation. Then in 2011, Thompson and others confirmed that, yes, Diaplosaurus was valid. Also in 2011, Tetsuto Miyashita and others looked at the skulls of Euoplocephalus and mentioned that there are no skull characters that separate Diaplosaurus from Euoplocephalus. The features that make them unique are in the pelvis and the feet, so it's possible that some skulls referred to Euoplocephalus may be Diaplosaurus. Oh, interesting. Because we don't have the feet <laughs> so to differentiate between the two. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard when you don't have a fully articulate skeleton for comparison purposes. Yep, you gotta use what you got. Diaplosaurus lived in an area with frequent flooding, and other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Diaplosaurus include the Ankylosaurus Edmontonia, Euoplocephalus, and Scolosaurus, Ceratopsids like Chasmosaurus, Hadrosaurs like Carithosaurus, Gryposaurus, and Parasaurolophus, Tyrannosaurs like Gorgosaurus, Dromaeosaurs like Hesperonychus, Troodontids like Latinovenatrix, and Cenonathids like Cenonathus and... Chirostenodes. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 